Sister Sophia said no, and I feel we shouldn't be celebrating Juneteenth either. Okay, Sister Sophia, we shouldn't be celebrating Juneteenth. Ah, I don't know if that has something to do with your Islamic persuasion, but one of the things, and I can say this having been raised a Muslim, and I respect Islam, beautiful re religion, Ramadan Mubarak, to my Muslim brothers and sisters. I will always consider myself a member of that community. I still pray pretty much the way I prayed as a Muslim, although I've Africanized it now because I know my culture. But one of the issues I've always had being raised Muslim is the fact that the masjid never really honored the African contribution to civilization. And, and, and it was such a contradiction because we would always say that there's no place for race and culture within Islam, but we spend our whole life imitating Arabs. We want to teach Arab language. We want to dress like Arabs. We want to send our kids to Arab schools. So how is it that in Islam, my Sunni brothers and sisters, not to get off topic, but how is it there's no room to celebrate African culture. There's no room to celebrate African life and African spirituality. You know, y'all never want to, I, I've never heard about the mosque on black history events, but it's okay to study Arabic all day long. It's okay to move to Iraq and it's okay to move to Pakistan and spend 20 years dressing up like an Arab and learning how to talk like an Arab and eating like an Arab. But it's okay to imitate Arab culture, but it's not okay to practice your own. I'm sorry. You will never get me to believe. And I respect the religion. It's beautiful. I still go to masjids now. If I get an opportunity to go to a masjid and mix a lot, I'm going to go in there and offer two rakats. Yes, I would. A lot y'all don't know about me. But there's no way you're going to get me to think that supreme consciousness, the one almighty God of the universe, there's no way you're going to get me to believe that my God wants me to practice another man's culture in order to serve him there's no way you can get me to believe there's no way you can get me to believe that my lord wants me to practice another man's culture to learn another man's language in order to serve supreme consciousness there's no way you get me to believe that and that's where me and the Sunni Muslim community, that's where we're going to have to respectfully disagree with each other. There is no greater form of cultural imperialism. There is no greater form of cultural imperialism than to tell a people, you got to study your religion in my language. Do you see how powerful that is? Listen. That's like the white man saying you got to worship Jesus in his in his image. The white man says you have to worship Jesus in his image. The Arab comes along and says you have to study religion in his language. What's the difference? What's the difference? The white man saying you got to worship God in his image. The Arab saying you have to study your religion, study your God in his land. What's the difference? Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not praying to God in the white man's image. And I'm not studying God in the Arab's language. I'm going to be unapologetically African today. I'm going to be unapologetically African tomorrow. And I'm going to be unapologetically African until the day that I die. What is my religion? You want to know what my religion is? My religion is black African liberation. That's my religion. My religion is black African liberation. That's my religion. My religion is black African African liberation. So if that ain't your religion, if that ain't your religion, if your Jesus ain't about black African liberation, if your Muhammad ain't about black African liberation, okay? If your Elohim, if your Yahweh, if your Jehovah is not about black African liberation, I don't want none of it. How can religions founded by black men be so anti-African? How can religions founded by black men be so anti-African?